Hi, I'm David Katzmeyer, senior editor with CNET, and I'm sitting next to the LG 47LE 8500. This is one of two screen sizes in the 8500 series. It's also a 55-incher, and this review will apply to both. Uh, this is LG's second from highest end uh, LCD TV for 2010, and it really has plenty of features and a whole bunch of picture quality to talk about. We'll get to that in a second. First off, I'd like to call your attention to styling of this TV. One of the highlights is this one sheet of glass design on the front here. It basically makes it look like the TV is pretty much a single piece, uh, even when viewed from the side, uh, which is a pretty slick look. Uh, speaking of the side of this TV, it's 1.4 inches deep, so those LEDs in the backlight really do help get it a lot thinner than a standard fluorescent lighting used on most LCDs. The swivel stand on this TV is actually a little squared off compared to most, and that's a nice little touch. There's also a glass base, so all in all, it's one of the slicker looking models on the market. The feature set on this TV is extensive. It begins with the interactivity, which includes Netflix, Voodoo On Demand, uh, YouTube, uh, Google's Picasa feature, as well as a whole host of others uh, headed up by Yahoo Widgets. So all things considered, this TV has plenty of video streaming and a good deal of widget functionality, which includes stuff like weather, uh, stock ticker information, sports, that sort of thing. You can also stream videos, photos, and music via a home network or a USB connection. One downside, this TV doesn't have any audio streaming capabilities, although YouTube has plenty of music videos and stuff like that. So if you're looking for Pandora or whatever, you might have to wait for a firmware update or look for another television. The picture affecting features on this TV are extensive, as we've expect from LG. Uh, you turn on the TV, you can go into the menu and play around with a lot of different features. There's a 10-point IRE system for calibrating the color temperature. There's also new gamma points this year, as well as the ability to play around with the color management system. So all things considered, there are plenty of tweaks on this TV. There's also two THX modes. You can't adjust those without a special code, but there is a day mode and a night mode from THX, so that's a new feature for this year in addition to the standard array of picture presets. The back panel of the LG has three HDMI inputs, two component video inputs, a PC input, and the LAN port here for Ethernet connection. On the side, there's a fourth HDMI input as well as a pair of AV connections that work with included breakout cables to give you an additional component video or AV input. There's also a pair of USB inputs and a headphone jack. The performance of the LE8500 is among the best we've seen from any TV, LCD, or plasma. A lot of that has to do with the local dimming LED arrangement. That leads to excellent black levels on this set. Again, among the best we've ever tested. There's also very good shadow detail. The color accuracy on the LG is among the best we've tested. Its 10-point IRE system allowed us to really nail the color, and there's also very good out-of-the-box color from the primaries and secondaries. The TV's video processing did slip up a little bit. It doesn't allow you to adjust the de-judder and the uh, blur modes as well as a lot of the other TVs we've tested, Samsung in particular. The TV also has relatively poor bright room performance, so when you have reflections or bright objects in the room, the TV's screen doesn't do a very good job of attenuating those. On the other hand, the set does look relatively good from off-angle compared to some LED sets we've seen in the past. Its picture still falls off a little bit when you're one or two seat cushions from the side, but again, not as bad as we've seen in the past. All told, the LG LE8500 is one of the best-performing TVs we've tested in 2010. That's a quick look at the LG LE8500, and I'm David Katzmeyer.